Today marks 50 days until the opening ceremony in Tokyo of the Olympics and while the pandemic casts a shadow over the Games, it's not the first time the Olympics have faced a major challenge. A new book called Tune In uncovers the fascinating history of the modern Olympic movement told through cartoons of the era and revealing inside stories, close calls and calamities. Uh, Michael Payne is the man behind the book and a former director of the IOC. He joins us live from Lausanne at the home of the Olympics. Michael, thanks for joining us. Um, look, you've uncovered some wonderful cartoons here. This one on the Russian cheating scandal being one of your favourites. What is it about a cartoon that can capture the essence of the time? It's the sheer simplicity of the, the drawing. It doesn't often take many words. And I mean, this one is brilliant. <laughs> You're looking at the Paralympian athletes and they've been caught cheating, so he runs away. And that's actually <laughs> happened at the Olympic Games with two teams where they were found that they weren't quite as disabled as people thought they were. Wow. Uh, the Queen had quite a role to play in the London Games, joining James Bond for the opening ceremony. We all remember that. It was a role that not even her family knew about. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. The original idea came from Danny Boyle, the producer of the ceremonies. He presented it to the organising committee several years beforehand, and they said, no way we're going to convince the Queen to do that. And uh, they forgot about it. And then suddenly, getting closer to the game, somebody said, well, why don't we ask her? And eventually she was persuaded. Yeah. But she didn't tell her family. And during the games, her grandchildren, Prince Harry, Prince William, they're sitting in the stadium. And they look up and they scream, it's granny. They had no idea. And I mean, even the producers, the day before they were filming it, they were expecting it to be a stand-in. And the Queen's dresser called up and said, uh, what would you like Her Majesty to wear tomorrow morning? Uh... And she fully engaged. And apparently after the, after the ceremony, um, a friend was talking to her and they said, your grandchildren had no idea. And she said, well, yeah, one must have one's little secrets, mustn't one? Oh, and so it, it's been fun researching all of these sort of stories behind the scenes that uh, people don't know, but you know, the, the games bring the world together and it's to, to give a laugh. And we, and we love those surprises too, don't we? Uh, you've been to 20 Olympics now, but Rio in 2016 was the one that really caused some daily headaches. What was happening behind the scenes there? Uh, Rio was a challenge, to put it mildly. I mean, interestingly, with <clears throat> everybody calling for a cancellation or postponement of the Games in Tokyo, exactly the same four years ago with the Zika crisis. Doctors were saying it wasn't mm. safe to go to Brazil because of the Zika crisis. It all went forward, but the organization was tough because, I mean, behind the scenes, honestly, the IOC didn't know if they would make it to the next day. Yeah. Never mind to the closing ceremony. Wow. Uh, but. Ultimately, they were great games. They, they presented great sports, but organisation, it was tough. Yep, absolutely. Zika scared a lot of people, didn't it, at that time. Michael, wonderful memories, terrific book. Congratulations. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure.